This is Tawana Freeman with the Black Life Coaches Network, and thank you so much for joining us here for another episode of Black Life Coaches TV. Well, you know, we are at it again. We have found um, another special guest that I believe will um, greatly support all those entrepreneurs out there who have a vision and the idea of being able to transition out of the workforce into entrepreneurship and having your own thing. But it's not just the entrepreneur. We're actually going to be speaking to those people who just have a vision, a, con a concept that you can potentially energize that concept and then look at how we can move from being, again, an employee to employer. So my guest today is Devin Robinson. Hello, Devin, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Thanks for inviting me on. Oh man, I'm excited because you, you know, your resume is stacked and I love guests that have plenty to talk about. Our viewers are excited to learn from all our guests, but for you, you have a wonderful history that brings you into the world of entrepreneurship and the, the one thing that you have that's going on right now so that we don't have to get into everything is your new book. It's called yes. The Power Move, right? The How to Transition from Employee to Employer. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Tell us about that. Well, Power Move, How to Transition from Employee to Employer is a book that I put together for individuals um, that want to really learn and understand the dynamics of, entre of entrepreneurship. Um, you know, one of the things that I really go into in the book and, and really I have, have identified in my journey of, of helping people and being a successful entrepreneur myself is there are a lot of psychological factors. Uh, there are a lot of um, um, assumptions, uh, hidden pitfalls and stuff in, in business that a lot of the business books, uh, textbooks and, and things of that nature don't prepare you for. Um, you know, people tend to go into the um, like I, I like to say, people take you from M to Z as far as starting a business. They tell you the best structure to start and how to apply for a loan and all this different stuff. But you rarely find uh, resources or individuals starting from A. You know, A, the starting point is uh, the psychological aspect. Are you prepared? Do you even have the resources or do you even have the gumption uh, to do well in, in entrepreneurship? So. Um, I've helped people uh, with entrepreneurship through my writings and consulting and even just the experiences that I've gained um, in business myself. Um, but I started to notice that there was just a common thread of individuals when they did get into business, they were just being blasted with so many unforeseen um, right. that they would come back to me and say, hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? And a lot of it, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of the questions and what's not that they were asking me were not really covered or could be covered in in textbooks or in some seminars so i said you know what let me go back and and write a book because you know that's that's what I've, I've written several books now let me go back and write a book that really speaks to these individuals that have been uh raised or conditioned or all they knew was how to be an employee you know the book is broken down into four sections uh and it's move MOV is an acronym. It stands for mindset, order, vacate, and execute. So of course, the first mm -hmm. thing to speak about is your mindset. Right. Then the next thing we talk about is order, getting things in order. Do you have your resources in order? Do you have the right support system? Uh, what about your social setting, your circles, the things that you do? Uh, do you have the resources in order? B stands for vacate. And this is the, the real unique section of the book because it speaks about vacating those bad habits. Mm -hmm. And people tend to question, well, I don't have any bad habits. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't gamble. Uh, you know, I don't I exercise, you know. And I'm like, well, those aren't mm -hmm. the habits that I'm speaking about for entrepreneurship. For entrepreneurship, being the best employee is a bad habit. Uh, being uh, understanding of just what a consumer is, is a bad habit. Because when you become an entrepreneur, your focus shifts from being an employee or being a consumer into being a producer and an owner or an employer uh, of skills and resources. So that area, uh, you know, for example, what I speak about in the book, and I'm, I'm kind of going on, but I just want to uh, talk about uh, one of the, the methods that I've, that I've developed in the book is called the, the consumption theory. And the consumption theory speaks about consuming only 10% of your income living off of just 10% of your income, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't mean that, well, 
what it basically says, if you want to uh, have a $50,000 lifestyle, that means you have to be generating 500000 per year. That's right. And, and the thing is, that's where we have those bad habits because we tend to look at things like, well, I'm making 75000 a year. I save about 10% of my income. So I live off of about 68500 per year. So that's comfortable. And it's really not because in the sense of inflation, inflation rises to a tune of 8 to 12% per year. If you just live throughout that lifestyle and then you retire, you find yourself struggling in your golden years because you didn't really allocate a significant portion of your income. So that's just one of the things that I speak about in vacating your bad habits. And then E, that's the M through Z portion, actually executing on starting the actual business and how to do that properly. So that's what the book really uh, contains and that's what it's about. You know, Professor um, Robinson, one of the things that I think that I have always been extremely attracted to, and that is people who can successfully take a concept and develop a process Yes. And solve a problem through a process. I'm I, I, I'm a scientist. I mean, my background is chemistry. My my background is I'm a problem solver. So as a scientist, it is it is is I'm actually addicted to being able to say, OK, what's the problem and how can I solve that problem? And what you have done, again, is you have found a problem. You've d- identified it clearly. And now you're filling in the steps that's necessary for people to be successful in this particular area of of, um, business and the thing that i think is exciting about you know your new book you know um, power move is that you're addressing the the transition of the mind because everyone you know i talk about this all the time and you know know it's a problem in the african-american community as well that we do live uh, materially above our means Mm -hmm. It is a problem for us. And it is also a problem for us where we present ourselves falsely um, to give the perception that we have more wealth than we actually have. Absolutely. So the shift in the mindset has everything to do with you recognizing where you are as far as your, your value structure. What do you value? What is it that is causing you to behave in the way that you are that's re, you know restricting your finances or limiting you from being as, as successful as you possibly can be? I think the mindset, that's number one, and that's a great point, place to start, of course, then order. But the thing that I love is vacate. You know, a lot of times we never get to the vacate stage. Yeah. We will deal, we'll talk all day long about what we need to do in here. Yeah. Yeah. But the action associated with the transition mentally is critical. You know, how, how can you ever move forward if you do not put together an actual plan that can actually do the work for you vacating is literally purging you know getting rid of you know the complete transition point that's the action point and so i you know i am so glad that you just didn't give concepts and theories and you know all these you know experiential conversation in your book you're actually giving a model a success model that people can follow yeah you know it's almost uh the book is almost autobiographical because the things that I've done, and and I speak to people, I said I had two major transitions in my life. So I I don't write about anything that I've just studied in theory and kind of regurgitating facts and statistics. I don't do that. I write things about that I can speak on experientially. And I transitioned from uh, government. I was in the military, so I was getting paid the first or the 15th. When I transitioned from that into corporate America, yeah. that was a learning curve in itself because things are totally different. The pay structure is different. Uh, the the promotion model is different. So it was it was also a learning curve. And then when I decided to go from corporate into entrepreneurship almost 10 years ago, that again was another transition. So I found myself slowly transitioning in the mind and realizing that there were just landmines out here when it was time to transition. I found landmines when I went into corporate and I found them in entrepreneurship. Have I lost money? Yes. Have I fell into pitfalls? Yes, I have. And But I was able to rebound and continue because I had persistence and resiliency and one of the most important things, consistency. And when I took those, I was able to find and materialize my, my goals from my mind into actual tangibles. And you speak about system. I refined systems, I developed systems, and that is actually a chapter in the book, actually a lesson, I call them lessons, 
in the book where we speak about developing your system. So your system can be, and really that's what I tell people they are when they're entrepreneurs, you're an architect. All you're doing is designing a system that, that puts employees in touch with customers. So you, 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 you purchase skills from employees that add to the added value of your company that now you can sell either goods or services depending on what, biz, what type of business you're in into customers. So you're almost like a broker. But in order to be a successful broker, you have to have a very successful system. And that's what people break down in the system. How you're managing the finances, the location of the business, the hours of the business, the pay structure of the business, even the pay cycle, when you actually pay employees is important. So an entrepreneur is just really that. You're just a designer. You're designing a system that people will either come to and like as customers and, and come to and appreciate as employees. You put that together and you'll be successful. It's just broken down in very practical terms, but of course I speak on the uh, the very technical areas of business as well. I don't forego that because um, you know that those types of things are important as well, so you can understand the real language of business and how it applies. Okay, that's fantastic. Now you know we we didn't give a proper introduction in the beginning, so tell the audience a little bit more about who you are and what the diff, you know what you do obviously for the community because you are a professor and that's a that's a community service um but at the same time you you mentioned um your entrepreneurship and i know most entrepreneurs have multiple streams of income and multiple types of efforts so let's talk a little bit about who you are and what basically drove you to entrepreneurship yeah well you, well let's I'll, i like to speak about what drove me to entrepreneurship first um what drove me to entrepreneurship was um reality um, I was actually employed at WorldCon oh. when they were going through the huge accounting scandal yes. back in 2001, 2002. And I, I worked in a building with almost 200 people. And at the end of the day, when I resigned, because I willingly resigned, because I started to really realize a few things. Um, I was the I was one of three people working in that building. It was probably a 60,000 square foot building. It was huge. Um, but every layoff every scandal every story everything that came out management will call employees and say hey everyone's okay don't worry about it get back to work do what you got to do 10 days later layoffs come in that's all the layoffs we need it's all great we're where we need to be go back to work go back to work 10 days later more layoffs so wow seeing this happening over and over and over like a trend and i was an engineer so we really were uh kind of uh, uh, removed from a lot of the public attention and the public scrutiny that was taking place because, you know, we were working with a lot of the equipment and, and, and what's not. And I just, you know, after a certain time, you start to realize, like, wait a minute, people are getting riffed. They're, they're constantly restructuring. <laughs> when is my number going to come up? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. I got to really start thinking about myself and my future. And I really took a realistic, a very realistic look at myself. I had a great salary. But I looked at it and I said, how long can I survive without this salary? How much control do I have over pay increases? How much mm -hmm. control do I have over the preservation of my salary overall? And when I really took that real realistic look at myself, I had no control. Mm -hmm. I had none. And I said, I got to start creating a situation for myself where if, in fact, my number does come up, I'm not shaking in my boots and I'm able to, you know, leave or vacate the mm -hmm. premises mm -hmm. without having to worry that I'm going to, you know, get kicked out of my home or, you know, all those types of tragedies that may happen. So that mm -hmm. I hatched a plan. To, to set up myself that I can uh, transition smoothly from corporate into entrepreneurship. Did I know a whole lot that I needed to know? I didn't. Wow. And I did it. And I'm telling you, it was a rude awakening. And <laughs> that, that's why in Power Move, I even cover a lot of this stuff. Power Move is really like a journal uh, of how my experience was and why you shouldn't do this and why you should do this. Uh, I talk about how I, you know, played this, play the stock market for a while in order to raise my funds up and how I successfully did that, the resources you can find to do that, some real estate businesses that I did. Then I owned a salon and barbershop. I did all this stuff to replace all of my income 
so that when I transitioned, I didn't disrupt my uh, my uh, my lifestyle. Right. So I was able to do that successfully. So that's that's really where uh, the book is about, and that's what it drove me to. Now, um, the other things that I do in my life, as you ask, I, I own several businesses and an entrepreneur, but I teach uh, t- a technical college and a, a four-year university. I teach uh, business and economics, um, and I've been doing that for uh, over seven years. And really, that is my my place of uh, therapy. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's it's a place where I feel like I'm just robbing a bank because they're paying me to keep my brain sharp <laughs> and they're paying me to hone my skills That's in right. business and to take what I know in the textbook and put it into the real world environment where I'm also coaching and training entrepreneurs that have That's never right. en- entered into the college classroom. Absolutely. So I'm pulling all that together and being a, a successful author, I'm able to uh, do the writings, but build curriculums and build lesson plans and really just train people in, in the fashion so they can um, change their lives, you know, and, and rewrite their legacies. And um, that's what I do. So I have um, a bachelor's, master's and a few classes short of a doctorate in business, all in business. And, and I have my own experience in business. And uh, of course, I, you know, own companies and whatnot. So that's, that's who I am. And I've, I've, I've hatched movements and written columns. I was a, a columnist for seven years in a Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper, uh, wrote a weekly column, also teaching people how to be successful in business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, business is really about your psychology. You know, That's how right. you're able to be successful in business really have a lot to do with your psychology and business and how well you can conquer yourself, how well you can remove yourselves from your emotion and focus on the logic or the rationale of decisions. That's really what it boils down to. So, you know, just getting people to understand that. Um, I tell you, I tell people the biggest competitor you will have in business is yourself. That's right. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if you can handle that, then you can handle pretty much anything. Absolutely. And that was a perfect way to kind of wrap up that um, that question, because we do stand in our own way. And you were very um, strategic in transitioning yourself from, you know, that corporate, that that cushy job where everything they talk about job security. So many people are afraid to take that transition because of that security. Um, and I know it, how um, a lot of people always wonder when is the right time to leave? When is the right, whether you're into entrepreneurship or just wanting to do a career transition, everyone always asks the same question, when is the right time to leave? And I've had other guests talk about, you know, having a certain amount of income stored away so that if you do leave and you're not successfully transitioned to another um, place of employment or um, being able to satisfy your income requirements, how much time or how much income do you need to have securely? So, you know, that's a great question for you because as you were preparing to transition, you were actually managing two things at once. You were in your secured position as an employee. You were operating your entrepreneurial dream at the same time to ensure you had a replaceable income. So how long did it take you to get to a place where you had that security that you were looking for, financial security, to take that move? It took me about 18 months. Um, you know, there's there's a philosophy that I have that I totally believe that I tell people. Liabilities and opp- opportunities cannot coexist. They don't exist in the same place. So if you want more opportunities, you got to reject liabilities. So when I'm focusing on building my business and building opportunities for myself, for myself, I was also looking at the liabilities that I carried and getting rid of the liabilities and really re Mm-hmm. reframing the way I thought about comfort and what I felt comfort was. Um, at the time, working at a corporate office, I drove a nice BMW and a nice Mercedes Benz and had a motorcycle. I had all this stuff. Right. And, you know, people, when they transition and want to go from one place to the other, they want to ensure their comfort. You know, they want to ensure that they have that comfort moving. So someone else may say, well, I'm not leaving until I can replace all of the income that I have now so that I don't have a hiccup in the process. Well, my transition to me was a little more expeditious because I believed in getting rid of those um, liabilities simultaneously while I was creating my income for my opportunities. Wow. So by the time I transitioned, I drove a pickup truck 
and an old 1994 Nissan. And I took those cars and I said, this is now my new comfort because what they do is create the peace of mind that if something goes wrong on one of these cars, the maintenance expense is not crazy. The insurance isn't crazy. I don't have to worry about car payments. This is where my mindset went. So I sold those luxury cars. But when I sold them, I didn't feel like I lost anything. I felt like I gained a whole lot. Absolutely. And I gained the security that I now reframed in my mind that was actual security. So people were looking at me and I would have, I mean, I got criticism from close friends and family members. They were like, what's going on with this guy? Did he join a cult? What's happening with him? And this, you know, I got all this stuff and I'm like, I'm like, nah, man, I'm not part of a cult. If you want to call my quest for self-sustainability a cult, well then sign me up. I'm in a cult, but I'm not in the traditional sense of a cult. But when this happened, I so-called lost friends and families and people were kind of, you know, dispersing themselves away from me because I was no longer the fun guy that -hmm. would spend all of his money and was so vain and had all these stuff that I really didn't need and the materialism factor wasn't there anymore. So I became almost a recluse, but it didn't bother me any because, like I said, I was reframed in my mind that this is my new comfort. My new comfort is I don't have to punch a clock. My new comfort is I'm not shaken by receiving a pink slip every day or concerned about if the CEO is going to go out there and go crazy because he, he found he's cheating on his wife. He found some woman he's going to deal with, or he's addicted to gambling or, you know, I don't have to worry about this anymore because now my destiny lies in my own hands, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. So I had to develop myself, you know, maturely in the sense where I'm very responsible. I had businesses where, uh, the, the the lease payments on the spaces were were astronomical. Uh, I've had many situations where I'm making payroll and I'm paying employees, but I'm not paying myself. Uh, these are some of the sacrifices that you got to make, but it comes with mat- with maturity. That's right. And you know, this is how I just rewrote myself, and I'm having fun every single day when I get up. I haven't used an alarm clock in ten years. Wow. You people don't don't believe I haven't used an alarm clock in ten years. I have sometimes have flights to catch at six in the morning to go across the country. I wake up at three thirty without an alarm clock. You don't have to wake me up because I'm loving the life I live. And I tell people, if you live the life you love, you never need an alarm clock. And that only happened because I rewrote what was security in my mind, what was comfort in my mind, what were the things that I wanted. I really differentiated what were wants, what were needs. And these were things that just became part of my fiber. And yeah. over time, uh, that eight, that short 18-month period, I was able to leave because my liabilities became so low that right. I didn't have the spending habits. I didn't have all these different things. that I teach people how to do tracking as well, how to you know make that transition as well in that financial behavior. And I was able to move rapidly and be gone. And I haven't ever really felt you know severe discomfort because of that, because I just prepared myself in that fashion. So... Um, when we speak about preparing yourself and when is the right time, the right time is the time that you make it. You can make it as fast as as you want, or you can make it as slow moving as you want as well. It's just how you rewrite your behaviors and your decision making. So, you know, for me, if I want to get something done, like anyone, if you really want something, you're going to be very, very adamant about making it happen. You're going to be very deliberate about making it happen. Um, you know, that's what you're going to do. So how deliberate are you in being a successful entrepreneur, self-sustainable and not uh, having the false sense of security? That's totally, totally up to you. Absolutely. Unbelievably powerful. You know, no wonder your students love you and they're so willing to carry your banner and tell everybody about you. I mean, actually, it was one of your students that actually contacted us about you. And I am absolutely, I mean, that's the best, that's the best, um, you know, um, honor that you can receive for having people to refer you so that your message can get further into the world. I mean, that's the perfect example. Um, and now I know why. So it, it, you know, I, I, I actually wish that I was back in school and you were my professor. I mean, I think that I would probably have changed the world in my 20s and, you know, and probably would have made different choices if I had someone like you in my life. So those 
Those young people are absolutely fortunate to have you as a professor in their lives. And I hope that they do not take it for granted. I mean, though, there are so many people who have benefited from what you do and on, in your written word. There's so many people, even in the hair industry, we didn't get into it, but I'm going to say it just quickly. If you yeah. want to know a little bit about this, um, Professor Devin Robinson has also um, had a successful um, entrepreneurial um, effort in the area of beauty and hair care. I, I, that's all I want to say about it, and we'll have to come back and bring you on so that we can discuss just that alone. Yeah. That is huge, the yeah. things that you have done in that area, and you've changed lives um, just in that area alone. So I am um, so glad and honored that we had an opportunity to speak with you, and thank you for your time, but you have to come back. We have to go. Oh, on absolutely. Back. Absolutely. However you need me, you know, I, you know, I... I don't want to take all of this to the grave. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to share it at any platform that's given to me. I'm going to make sure it happens, whether written, written work or verbally, however. I'll be honored to come back anytime you invite me. That's fantastic. Okay, and so our guest again, again is Professor Devin Robinson. You can reach him. Um, what's, your web, what's your web address that you would like people to um, be directed to? Yeah, for Power Move, for my book, uh, you can go to powermovebook.com or powermoveprofessionals.com. Um, my website, devinrobinson.com, that's D-E-V-I-N, robinson.com, um, can kind of filter you to all the different things that I'm doing, from my blogs to the Beauty Supply Institute website to all that stuff. Um, devinrobinson.com is probably your best bet to find everything that I'm doing. Okay, now where can we purchase the book? Is it um, available only online? Yes, the, the book Power Move, uh, How to Transition from an Employee to Employer, can be purchased at powermovebook.com or powermoveprofessionals.com. And I'm kind of keeping it that way. I'm being hounded by, because uh, uh, all my other books, this is my eighth book. All my other books have been- Your have, eighth? My eighth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've all had wide distribution, um, Barnes & Nobles, Target, Walden, wherever. But I'm keeping this book so close to me and other books on Amazon too. I'm keeping it very close to me because I want to be able to connect with every purchase, every person that purchases that book. I need their mm -hmm. information and data because I don't want them to just take the book, shelf it, use it at a, as a, as a, a placeholder or a toaster, uh, I mean a coaster and move on. I want to make sure that they stay in this movement, in the process, in the model where I can reach out, and kind of nudge you along the way, see where you're at, and continue to make sure that you're inspired to achieve your goal. So, um, you know, I've sold over 40,000 copies of my books uh, wow. independently, over wow. 40,000. Wow. Um, and it's, I think, you know, I still have a ways to go, you know, how, just how I am. But I don't have, I don't know those individuals. You know, I don't know who they are, and I don't know if they went on, or they gave it up, or what they, they've done. So. Uh, for this book, I'm keeping it very close to me because I need to make sure that individuals are actually transforming their lives. You know what? Let I would like to help with that. So as you are looking at this video, please, if you see his information below this video, you'll see some comments and you'll see how to reach him by, um, by his um, website and where to purchase the book. What I would like you to do is if, if you want to reach out to Professor Devin Robinson and learn more about what he did to be the successful man that he is today, then I need you to post comments below. Let us help you connect with him. So you can go to his website or you can post comments below this video. Feel free. We are thankful for his time. I can't wait to have you back. And I look forward to having everyone um, give us feedback about the information that you gave and how powerful it was, because I know I learned something. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm humbled for the experience. Thank you. Entrepreneurship. Did I know a whole lot that I needed to know? I didn't. None of my parents are entrepreneurs. One worked in the hotel industry for pretty much 50 years, and my other parent uh, retired was a retired police officer. So I had no um, no cues from them on how to be successful in, in entrepreneurship. But I said, I'm young enough, I'm smart enough, uh, I'm armed with some uh, college education and business because all my degrees are in business. I'm 